Hello, and welcome to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone Edu Partner Program, and massage industry experts. With the challenges that have faced massage schools, students, and practicing therapists, thanks to COVID and its variants, the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone continues to support virtual learning and building massage community by connecting you with industry experts who share their knowledge and expertise on topics not only for class discussion, but career success. Tonight's expert is Carol McLellan, a doula childbirth educator and instructor for Upledger Institute International. Carol has shared her passion of birth and cranial sacral therapy internationally for over 35 years. Throughout her career, she has assisted in thousands of assisted and treated with thousands of pregnant moms, births, and babies. Let's listen and learn as Carol discusses cranial sacral therapy for conscious conception, pregnancy, and birth, sharing what happens from the thought of conception to pregnancy and delivery, and how that influences the rest of our lives physically, emotionally, and energetically. Consider cranial sacral therapy as a perfect tool to facilitate an optimum birth for mother, baby, and family. Keeping in mind, a positive birth creates a positive word, world. Carol, hello, and welcome to the EduTalk series. We're looking forward to your talk this evening. and. With that, I'll just turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Donnell. I'm so happy to be here to talk about my favorite subject. And so if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now because that'll make it a little more interesting for people. And I just, I'm also grateful that you invited us here, that Biotone invited us here. Um, I have to tell you, and this is this is true. I love their products. I use it for my body lotion and I love the magnesium on my feet. So I, I feel doubly honored to be here because um, it's a great product. But I also am very honored to be here in April because April is Cranial Sacral Therapy Awareness Month. And so it's a really great time to learn even more. Uh, when I first started um, learning cranial sacral therapy many years ago, it was voodoo and nobody knew what it was. And at the same time, I was working with a group of very forward thinking um, holistic health um, OB-GYNs that thought mothers could give birth on their own. And they were very um, wonderful and holistic in empowering me to understand that. And being able to bring the two together was really something that was very special. And Dr. Upledger actually was very supportive of it and asked me to be, um, become the developer and create the program that we have now, which is always evolving. <laughs> and so I wanna share a little bit with you in this short time. It's, it probably would take about you know, 20 days to get all this information to you, but um, I wanna share a little bit with you about how well cranial sacral therapy works for conscious conception, pregnancy, and birth. And the reason I say conscious conception is by it, consciousness means being in awareness or making a choice. So conscious conception, pregnancy and birth, parents are aware of be, before they even conceive or get pregnant, ideally the, about the choices they're going to make. And cranial sacral really empowers this so that it can really change that whole paradigm for them. We wanna talk a little bit about baby's um, experience of conception, pregnancy and birth creates lifelong consequences for the baby, the family and society. We have the wonderful opportunity to facilitate a conscious 
positive experience of conception, pregnancy, and birth by empowering the mom, the baby, and the whole family, because it truly is a trickle-down effect. And we'll talk about how it's not just the baby, but it's future generations, as well as coming from ancestral generations. CST is the most successful way to reduce or eliminate stress and improve positive outcomes. And we definitely need that in today's society. So I'm grateful you're all here because we need more people helping these babies get a better start on life, especially with all the stress in the world today. And truly with that, I mean, womb ecology becomes world ecology. And Thomas Verney, who's written many books, you're probably aware of the mind of your newborn child, et cetera. Um, he started the Association for Pre and Perinatal Psychology and Health. And as a scientist has talked about how what happens in the womb affects the world. And so if a child is born peacefully, they become a more peaceful person. And we talk about how we can help create those changes using cranial sacral therapy. So let's talk a little bit about conception, conscious conception, and how treating preconception is ideal. Because really conception and conscious conception starts months before actual conception. So in my ideal world, we start treating pre-parents or wannabe parents before they even think about conception. And the idea is to help each of them release emotional baggage, ancestral stuff, get their physical body more balanced and clear out emotional baggage they may be carrying that might impede or affect the baby epigenetically and help their bodies be in the best place possible hormonally and physically so that we can help them prepare to conceive a really healthy, happy child. Um, it also creates better communication between mom and dad or the partner, which we will also be talking about. But what's really important to understand is I think, you know, we talk about create, you know, someone wants to get pregnant and they're going to, you know, create this beautiful nursery and they think about what colors and making sure it's clean and all that. But the most important nursery is where baby starts and that's the womb. And so really making sure both mom and dad, because the sperm actually is half of the equation, make sure they are both in the best place possible. I want to share share with you a quick story with cranial sacral therapy. The beauty is, is we ideally, we help them get off on the best foot possible. But as you know, most people come to your practice after they're already pregnant or they already have issues. And this is one couple that I was treating and they had a daughter who was born with a cardiac syndrome, which means she doesn't have all of her corpus callosum. And so we had, we'd helped her daughter quite a bit with her seizures, et cetera, but they decide they want to get pregnant again. And so they want to get treated and think about conscious conception. So maybe their second child can be healthier. Not that that takes away any love they have for their first child. But, you know, as you may know, if you, if you work with children in families, um, when parents have come into my clinic and they have a child with whatever issue they have, they've already Googled it every which way. And so they probably know more about that particular um, issue than a lot of doctors. And these parents had, they had Googled it every which way, a cardiac syndrome. And they found out that what happens is it usually, it's only affects girls. There, there's three to 400 girls in the U.S., and usually what happens is there's like a little genetic glitch at conception from the dad. And so we treated mom and dad and he went back into doing what we call um, recreating or changing the cellular memory in the body or completion of the biological process where you can't change what happened, but you can change how you hold that in your body. And so he remembered when they were thinking about having their first baby. And they're a great couple and he loved her so much, but you know what? He, he wasn't sure. He was very afraid of her getting pregnant. So part of them wanted a baby and part of them was holding back and wanted it. Yes. No, he felt like a push me, pull you because his father was abusive and he was so worried that he might actually not be a good dad, that he was kind of holding back and kind of hoping mom didn't get pregnant. When we went and treated them, 
he shifted all that. And so he was in a better place. And he realized his daughter, no matter how different her body worked and looked, was perfectly perfect as her. And when he called her, she was nonverbal, non-ambulatory, but he had grandma hold the phone up. He said, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have doubted that you would be so wonderful. I just love you. And this nonverbal child said, oh, like trying to mimic him. And so beautiful to go out back and change that. They went on to have the next baby, perfectly happy, healthy baby boy. And so ideally starting preconception, but it's never too late to go back and, and recreate it, that story. So once we talk about conception and helping the hormones communicate and helping the fertility, then we talk about the magical blossoming of pregnancy. And it is a magical blossoming. It's, and I really want to emphasize the positive words because so many women feel like they're big and I feel like this big cow or a big elephant. And really they should feel this magical, miraculous blooming of a baby inside of them. And I think we've forgotten some of that magic and it helps empower moms. So what we want to do is of course, we want to help with cranial sacral, we want to help mom and baby communicate. That's the key thing because it's two people in there. Um, it's not just mom, there's a baby there. And we, if the more they can communicate and be a team, it empowers both of them. We can help relieve restrictions on mom's body or um, we can help with any physical restrictions in her hips. We work through her whole cranial sacral system, make sure hormone communication is working and she is in a better place to accommodate a growing baby so that there's not strain patterns or restriction patterns that affect the growth of baby. We help mom feel empowered to tune into the needs of herself and her child and help make informed decisions for the child and the childbirth. Most of the moms are, when they can tune into baby and they feel more empowered, they're willing to delay an epidural because once you delay an epidural, um, that changes the mother-child communication and sometimes it makes more birth complications and more birth interventions. And while we would never ever in the birth world deny a mom pain meds or an epidural, if she feels more confident and can move forward, she really it really creates a more positive outcome for both of them. Um, I was fortunate to get to work on a military base. I had carte blanche to their whole OB department for a couple of years. And the one thing we found out, all of the moms that got treated with cranial sacral during pregnancy were actually more confident and more willing to try and delay an epidural and all of their labor and deliveries went much smoother than with all the fear and then trying to add more medication and then everything slows down. So it really start helping have a good birth really starts during pregnancy because getting that mom to feel more comfortable physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And when you do that, they're more confident and then that really helps to avoid unnecessary birth interventions. Our cesarean birth rate on when we're working on the military base went down to 2%. So of all the moms that had cranial sacral therapy. And so it was really a, really a wonderful way to start life. We tune into the mom's body because cranial sacral therapy can help mom's body adapt to the changes it's experiencing. It can reduce the symptoms she may be experiencing and allow her to have a more enjoyable pregnancy. If, you're pre if you've been pregnant or you treat pregnant moms, you know all of the changes that happen in their body, miraculous as they may be, are not always comfortable. And sometimes mom has strain patterns in her body that she needs to release before ideally getting pregnant. But a lot of times we release them during pregnancy and she doesn't realize they're a problem until there's a little one growing inside her that needs a little more space or can't quite turn. And so during pregnancy is the best time to really treat her and baby together. But ideally, if you get her in a better position the earlier on, get all the physical restrictions released, she can have a more enjoyable pregnancy. Because CST helps create optimal epigenetics and environment by following and facilitating the inner physicians of both the mother and child. You know, with cranial sacral therapy, as you know, cranial sacral therapy is 
is therapist is not therapist driven. We let the inner physician, that was Dr. Uplager's term because he was a physician or the inner wisdom of that mother and that child guide our hands. So we follow and we facilitate what they need because we know that their bodies and their inner wisdom knows exactly what they need. And if we can get mom and baby communicating it's amazing the way the community they can get work through things and have a healthier, happy pregnancy. When we talk about that, when we talk about epigenetics, I know it's a hot topic the last few years. And if you've read in or listened to any of Bruce Lip, Dr. Bruce Lipton, probably one of the most famous, talking about epigenetics, that means outside the gene, epi or outside the gene. And it's what influences the environment of the gene expression. And if you know, he used to say that you, you, can actually, you can actually change the genes if you change the epigenetics. And so we, he also realized that the genes were like our hardware and that the software was our belief system and our thoughts. And so when we talk about treating a pregnant mom, baby's swimming in mom's emotional soup and her ancestral soup. And so if mom's having a stressful day or think about what's going on in the world now and there's more stress, baby's gonna pick up on that. Water carries information. And so the more we can help mom de-stress and more help the epigenetics and the environment of the baby, the better their whole uh, birth and pregnancy and birth will be. So really important to think about Babies are conscious. They know what's going on. If mom has a bad day, it happens. I mean, the world we live in is more stressful. But if mom talks to baby and say, don't worry, mom's fine. Don't take that on baby. I'm all good. Then you know that they can actually, they, you're teaching your child already how to overcome some hurdles instead of just holding on to that stress. We talk about how actually it comes ancestral. A uh, female fetus has ovaries by 12 weeks gestation. And when that little baby is 20 weeks old, there's six or 7 million eggs, more eggs than she'll ever have in her lifetime. So think about it. You can tell by my illustration. Here you have the baby fetus, which is a female, all of her eggs in place by 20 weeks. And then inside her, um, the baby is, the baby's inside mom. So basically that grandma, that mom is already having an effect on her child and her future generations. And so you can see that old saying about how things are passed down through ancestral lines. But the beauty is we can help shift that by releasing emotional patterns that are there or belief systems that are stuck and helping change that to more positive outcome. So it goes both ways. Not only will that help future generations, it'll help ancestry ancestrally too. Just kind of a fun fact here, at 10 weeks, babies are just past embryology, excuse me. The cranial sacral system is intact. Look how tiny those little feet are. I tried to give you a good image. By 12 weeks, the cranial sacral system is functioning. Some women have barely found out they're pregnant at 10 weeks, and here they already have a cranial sacral system that's functioning. And that's pretty mind boggling if you think about it, because the cranial sacral system surrounds a whole autonomic nervous system. So pretty impressive to think that that's already functioning. So the sooner we can treat mom and baby, and I do mean fetus, the more likely that we can encourage better outcomes and healthy, happy baby and mom. And we tune into the stress by blending and melding and being neutral. I cannot tell you how important neutral, neutral, neutral is because babies are swimming in mom's emotional soup and they are so open to taking on everything around them. So really important that we're very grounded and neutral when we tune in. And then we can really help facilitate the communication between mom and baby. And if we are help, we really want to make sure we don't get in the way of that. Not uncommon that maybe babies come and feel the therapist and feel comfortable because the therapist is communicating with them, but we don't want to get in the way of the mother and the baby bond or communication. We want to help facilitate that communication between mom and baby. And so 
let's say you've treated mom and baby and you've gotten a lot of the restrictions released and maybe mom released some of her own stuff from her birth. And now mom and baby can communicate about what does baby need right now? Or maybe mom had has some strain or is tired and they can just talk about that. So it doesn't become stress later. Um, I have treated so many adults that have actually had issues that they took on from their mom in utero. So the more we can help create a healthier mom and a healthier atmosphere for baby to grow in. What we found is because we're treating them and helping them communicate, we're helping with prenatal bonding. There's better communication, a more confident mom, easier pregnancy, easier delivery, more confident baby. Baby's more comfortable in their own body much lower cesarean birth rate, less or no postpartum depression, better family communication overall. And these are clinical discoveries we noticed when, we're, when I was doing the research project on the military base. And so when you get mom, you can help mom communicate with baby anywhere. Ideally, we, we have used cranial sacral techniques, but this is a picture of a mom that um, I was treating. I treated her through pregnancy. And I was friends with her mom, her grandma. And we we're out having lunch one day and she called her mom and said, you're having lunch with Carol, can, can I come over? I need her to treat me. And her mom's like, we're at a restaurant. She's like, I just need to talk to her because my labor hasn't started. And we were supposed to start labor today. And so she came over to the restaurant, we'd finished eating, but you know, kind of Dr. Seussical, I, you can do cranial anywhere if you want to put your hands on gently. And I just said, tune into baby. And she was so stressed, she couldn't do it. And she'd been really good at communicating with baby. So I said, so did you and baby decide today was they did? Well, no, I wanted, and then she caught herself saying, no, I wanted it to be today. And so she couldn't communicate in the normal way. So I said, you know what? Just calm down, tune into your heart, take a breath. And then tune into baby's heart and just connect your hearts if that's all you can do. Well, her mom or grandma to be sitting across the table taking pictures and mom is wearing all black. And when she connected with baby's heart, you can see the pink spot that came up on her baby belly and between her heart. So pretty exciting, a really lovely image of the beauty of, of bonding that's already happening, even when mom was stressful. Just tuning in heart to heart with baby is a really gracious way to just let baby know you're there. So in summary of working with the mom, all the amazing changes that take place in expectant mother's anatomy show the beautiful design of her body and how prepared her body is to conceive and nurture a baby for the nine month gestation. This is a wonderful example of the body's intelligence and why we should follow its lead. This is why cranial sacral works so well, because we follow and it can help the mothers experience to change what they're experiencing. So it's a positive, more enjoyable experience. You know, then we work also, we teach therapists to work with labor and we call it the labor of love. Yes, it is hard work, but when moms have been treated through pregnancy and they feel more confident, they can actually work through the neighbor. And then we encourage dads to be there as support and dads aren't going, wait a minute, wait a minute. I forgot how to help her breathe. What am I supposed to say now? And so they can be there to support and we can all work to empower, empower the mom and the baby, because they're a team, to have an optimal birth experience. We get their cranial sacral rhythms in harmony. And we teach CST techniques for labor and cranial sacral helps reduce stress so that there's min minimal in intervention so nature can do what it's meant to do. Um, it's so lovely. This is the commanding officer of the hospital working there with me with the white hair. Now it's a military hospital and this dad is a jet fighter pilot and most, a lot of the dads are like, oh, you know, I, I just don't do babies. But when they're older, I love to play ball or whatever. And because they were all invited to come to at least a couple of the sessions, we cranial sacral sessions during pregnancy, they got really involved with the baby early on and it changed their communication between babies. And dads that already had babies, it changed their communication with their older babies. And so really important to get everybody in sync and help everybody work together. 
And there's many techniques you can use cranial sacrally during labor. When we were doing it consistently, there's times it's not optimal to be treating mom in the pelvic area, even though that's maybe where she needs some help. Sometimes you need to be away from there a little bit so we could treat the cranium. And we learned that we could actually release the pelvic floor from using cranial bone techniques. And so we share those and it's really because the whole body is connected. So really wonderful to help moms have a wonderful labor and delivery. And remember that part of that stress is meant to be there. You know, one of the dads, one of my favorite things with those military jet fighter pilots, one of the dads had been with a mom. And um, when mom was going through, well, he'd been there for some of the pregnancy sessions. So when mom's going through labor and delivery, and she's thinking it is hard labor, you know, and it's um, not a war zone, but it's a lot. He looked and he just grabbed her belly and talked to baby. And he said, don't worry, baby. It's a power hug. Think of it as mom power hugging you out of there. And that shifted everything for both of them. What a beautiful way to look at it. And so the more we can look at it in a positive way. When we talk about birth um, and labor and delivery, um, they, you know, Dr. Uplodger used to always say, now don't forget to tell them about um, the baby's first cranial sacral treatment is birth coming down through the birth canal. You see how we've drawn the pictures of the cranial bones in each of these movements. This is called the seven cardinal movements. It's basically the seven cardinal movements a baby has to make to come down through the birth canal to be born and it, and it wiggle its way around to get the shoulders moved and the head in the smallest point. The only thing the, that I would prefer about this picture is that mom would not be laying flat on her back. And most times she's not anymore. So gravity can help. So baby doesn't have to come up over the sacrum or the, and the pelvis. But what happens during baby's first treatment is the cranial bones, as you know, overlap. This is important because those membranes, the meninges that they develop out of, um, actually this helps get the fluid, cerebral spinal fluid moving through all the brain parts. It squeezes the ribs and the lungs to help get the fluid out. So baby's getting ready to take that first breath when it comes out. It's stimulating a lot of the neuronal connections and it's actually helping stimulate a, a lot of the acupuncture meridians. So birth is baby's first treatment. And I know sometimes people think, oh, it's painful. And you know, it's a lot of stress. Well, that's also part of nature's design because stress actually helps teach the baby the how to help the filters between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system to prepare to be living on outside of mom's womb. And so all of this is part of nature's design. When it's an issue is if things don't go well or it goes too long or the cranial bones get misplaced or the override doesn't change. And then we talk about how to treat that. And then once baby's born, we talk about skin to skin bonding. Ideally, that the first thing to do is not to treat mom and baby. Baby should be skin to skin next to mom. That affects not only baby's um, immune system, it's part of that microbiome of building that up also when baby comes through mom's birth canal, but also it's helping the baby feel comfortable. It's like the other side of the blanket. And so it also gives baby time. Mom's chest helps determine baby's temperature and creates the right temperature for baby. Mom's heartbeat feels comfortable to baby. It all, there's many things that happen to make this an easier transi transition so baby doesn't feel disconnected to mom. So there is a part I think many you might have heard of, it's called the sacred hour. And that is where newborns that are more sensitive in all their senses than they'll ever be again, get sensory input and challenges can happen. We, this is where that shifts it by doing skin to skin bonding. There, it, it was researched by a neonatologist who loves cranial sacral therapy and has gone through our uploader classes named Dr. Raylene Phillips. And she has actually um, coined the phrase the sacred hour and done the scientific research to show the neurological changes in the baby in that first hour after birth when it is skin to skin with mom. So super important time. Her hospital also when they do cesareans because of her research, they have remodeled their operating room, their birthing room. So if baby has to have a cesarean, mom has to have a cesarean, 
instead of just whisking the baby off to the nursery for assessment, there's a team just stay on the other side of the wall. They have a little window, they put the baby through. Baby is back on mom's skin to skin after cesarean in five minutes. That's their ideal time. And a lot of times they haven't even finished stitching mom up yet, but that is how important it is. So ideally, even in a regular birth, we would not treat baby right away afterwards. We want to give mom and baby that bonding time that first hour. The only time I would make an exception to that is if baby has a hard time latching on. Now, this was one of the few cesarean moms we treated in the hospital. Um, and we needed baby to latch on. Baby was having a hard time after the cesarean. So we did a little cranial sacral therapy and helped baby latch on so baby could nurse. I never took baby away from mom. You can see they're still skin to skin. And so knowing when to do cranial sacral is just as important as, as treating with cranial sacral. We also, CST facilitates more optimal cesarean births. This is a cesarean birth. I actually got to do cranial sacral during the cesarean. It was beautiful. But we can um, facilitate more optimal adoptions in getting mom and baby to communicate, IVF, in vitro fertilization, ART, um, assisted reproductive technology, and surrogacy. And we've been able to use cranial sacral to help moms and babies and families get a better start. We talk also about how it helps the dads and the partners and the families because a relaxed dad or partner is a more relaxed mom. And we already talked about preconception, but we talk about how cranial sacral can help the dad or the partner even during labor and delivery um, to feel more calm and to feel more confident. And for skin to skin bonding afterwards and that skin to skin bonding for the whole family creates better communication and a stronger family bond. So helping them all feel more comfortable. We can get their cranial rhythms in more harmony and synchronize and that helps them communicate better and we literally have found over the years that when we treat the whole family either before or during labor and delivery um, they are all more comfortable together and they just work better as a team and as I said before it's never too late to recreate a more optimal birth experience um, you might treat people that didn't have a good birth experience. We have, that's very, very common, but you can go back and do what we call completion of the biological process. I gave you that example in the story of the two parents that already had one baby with all, with the corpus callosum issue. And um, they wanted to get treated before or a do over, so to speak, so they could be in a healthier place for the second baby. And that's the beauty of cranial sacral therapy. There's so much new research coming out and everybody thinks prenatal bonding and all of this is really wonderful. But the, the only thing I've seen that covers all of it, the, so the emotional, the mental, the physical and the spiritual energetic all together is cranial sacral therapy. And so when we use that, we can really create a more beautiful experience and it has a trickle down effect and it will affect, it's our future. If everybody had a good birth, they say that in two generations that it would change the planet. We found that a lot of the therapists applying CST, they found that it was a profound experience for themselves, their moms and their babies, facilitated a wonderful birth experience and an optimal start to life. Midwives have loved it. A mid one mid midwife said, I'm always looking for ways to protect and nurture my families. Cranial sacral therapy is so therapeutic that I want all my patients to do this. And the moms, the gentle work of cranial sacral therapy during pregnancy relieved my physical complaints, helped me prepare mentally and emotionally for childbirth and allowed me to connect more deeply with my baby. I am so thankful to have discovered this tremendously wonderful, this treatment during my pregnancy. It helped me tremendously. And that was from a doctor who was a mom. And I want to say thank you for letting me be here. I felt like I was going fast, so much information, but incredibly grateful. And you will be getting follow-up and handouts on this. And if you have any questions, please contact myself or the Upledger Institute International. And I would like to share a quick little video of some of our work we're doing right now. And turn my...
What happens during gestation and birth leaves a lifelong imprint. In this one day class, you'll be able to journey back into your own gestation and your own prenatal epigenetics and birth experience to see what happened to help you become who you are. You will be able to use this as a beautiful entry point into transforming your birth experience into positive cellular memories. This is a day that you can spend with your inner physician. We'll spend more time learning more about what Dr. Fletcher taught and what he did with intention, quantum health, and cell talk. You'll learn new techniques using cranial sacral therapy to arc into your own birth experience and how the physical and the emotional effects it might have on you. You'll be looking at your ancestral blueprint to see if there's any lingering effects on you and potentially future generations. When you change birth, you change the Okay, I'll stop sharing my screen now. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of your time. Well, thank you so much, Carol. And I did see a question come in from Sue. Um, aside from thanking you for the presentation, would CST be a contraindication in prenatal with pitting edema? No, in fact, I've actually worked with a couple children with that issue, and it may not completely turn it around, but it can help slow it down or stop it. Um, it's um, moving forward or en enhancing. Okay, I haven't seen any other questions come in. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would like to ask a question because uh, my friend's daughter had a baby the other day, seven weeks early, and um, cesarean section. They, um, day three, they still hadn't done skin to skin. <clears throat> Is there any way to make up for that loss of ground or? Yes, I'm not 100%, but yes, you definitely can. Um, one, one, as soon as they can get skin to skin, the better. You know, we're finding different hot, we're trying to get more baby friendly hospitals. This is why we're trying to get the word out there. Um, and um, I think that it's really important that um, hospitals are starting to let moms after cesarean um, have baby, even if they're both in the hospital, they'll bring them in for a little bit of skin to skin. That's not in all hospitals yet. But what can happen is when mom goes home or as soon as she's able to do skin to skin with baby is optimal. And then holding the baby, if she's able, depending on the situation, sometimes they can still breastfeed. Sometimes they put, they pump and put the breast milk in a bottle, but still doing that skin to skin. So baby smells mom because baby's been smelling mom for nine months in the amniotic fluid, you know, and I would definitely see there's a lot of things that um, might have happened because cesarean birth is surgery. And if she had to have a cesarean, there might be a little bit of issues or trauma in the body. And so I definitely recommend her getting some cranial sacral. It's very common that moms have their babies come get cranial sacral if they were a cesarean. <laughs> and then they think, oh, I'm fine. And they don't realize that they can be holding that stress too. And so it's really good for both of them to get treated. Yes. In fact, we usually treat them both together on the table. Okay. Uh, yes, there was a lot of stress when yeah. they realized it was labor and not just a little cramping. Um, so prior to birth that day, there it was anxiety and stress. And then following it, uh, the neonatal unit and uh, really not being the baby's veins too small. So the IV would come out. So there are a lot of issues that delayed that skin on skin. Yeah. And, well, you know, the other thing is they have researched now, and we talk about this in our courses, that when a mom has a baby, some of her stem cells stay in the baby and some of the baby's stem cells stay in the mom. 
you know, I always used to joke that that's what creates that mom's intuition of where their kids are or whatever. But I also think we've used it when moms have had a baby that's in the NICU and they're not be able, able to be with them. They still talk to the baby. And we've had an instance where we treated a mom and dad was at the NICU with the baby while we were treating the mom. And every time we treated mom, she was talking to baby as if baby was still there. It improved baby's vital signs in the NICU. So there's still a connection. And the more she can communicate with baby, even if she's not with baby, it's really important and powerful. I will pass that along. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Uh, I still haven't seen any other questions come in. So um, I'd like to invite Jackie from Up Ledger Institute, the marketing director to jump in. Um, your, your talk has been excellent. Um, we did have some students sign up today um, that are still in school. And so this may have been a little bit above their heads. And um, let's see, um, I, I would just like um, to know how to techno technologically get everything done. Um, but I'd like Jackie to um, have an opportunity to speak um, on preliminary class work with cranial sacral therapy so that the students understand or can learn more about it. Um, Jackie, I need you to unmute. There we go, okay. okay. There you go, All thank right. you for joining us. Yeah, well, I wanna thank you and Carol both um, for wonderful presentations and for our collaborative efforts. Um, for those of you who attended tonight, you'll also, I think Donnell also sends, it, sends you correspondence. You'll also be hearing from me and from Elise, who's also here. She's our facilitator tonight. Um, Elise is part of the marketing team as well. Um, and just, um, we'll be sending you some information about the curriculum that Carol spoke about, the courses and the foundation that helps you get there. So I just, again, wanna thank you. And any questions you can always send, um, you can go to the upledger.com website, hit contact me and we will get the information or you can email either Elise or myself. Our emails are our first name, period, last name at IAHE, which stands for the International Alliance of Healthcare Educators, which is our umbrella organization. So for me, it would be Jackie.Halderman at IAHE.com. Elise would be Elise.Dowler at IAHE.com. Um, and I, again, that's all. I'll let Elise close it out if she has anything she needs to say from um, logistics or any other um, viewpoint she may have. But again, thank you, Donnell. Carol, thank you as always. It was a wonderful presentation. And for the students and participants tonight, thank you for joining us. All um, right, yeah. thank you, Jackie. And Elise, did you have something to say or? Um, no, I think Jackie covered it. I was gonna put our email in the chat, but I think it's oh. gonna be in the, e in the um, emails that they get, so. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, then in, in wrapping up, I will say uh, tomorrow you'll be receiving a follow-up email. In the email will be a copy of the recording tonight and Carol's uh, PowerPoint will be included. Her email address again is at the end of the PowerPoint if you would like to contact Carol directly. Additionally, I'd like to mention our upcoming edu talks and April is flying by. April 19th, we have Jody Scholes who will present on MBLEX, passing strategies that work. On May 3rd, we will have Diana Thompson who will share with us electronic health records, your practice, time and money saver. And on May 17th, we'll have Janet Wolf Blevins with her introduction to acupressure. And Janet had also um, published a book on acupressure, Introduction to Acupressure, which can be found on biotone.com under the Edu Talk tab for the author series. 
Lots of information. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and watch your inbox for follow up on Carol's presentation, as well as um, the RSVP form should be going live this evening for the April 19th Jody Scholes MBLEX talk. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. As always, you make EduTalks be safe and take care. Thank you, everyone.